Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Brad, today we're going to talk about the vaccine. Ooh. All right. Heard about this. The COVID-19 vaccine. Now listen, I used to be, before the vaccine was approved and they were talking about it, I was kind of an anti-vaxxer. You were. <laughs> You're not an anti vaxxer Now I'm an uncle vaxxer I'm okay. telling you, I'm all over it, okay? And I think uh, everyone should be all over it. Let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So what, just basic terminology, what is a vaccine? Right, so vaccine is a, a medicine we use to create an immune response in someone's body to prevent them from catching a disease. And give us a, a lowdown on how the typical, up until now, vaccines work. So usually it was a piece of, of dead virus or uh, uh, reduced capacity virus that's introduced in the body so that your body then recognizes it, makes some antibodies so that the next time when you see a whole bunch of virus, you're kind of ready to attack it. Right. That, that's typically how a vaccine works. A guy named Jenner invented it years ago, tested it on someone years ago. Bruce? Old. Not Bruce. Um, so then now uh, we're using what's called mRNA uh, vaccines, right? Okay, so what's different about mRNA okay. vaccines? So the, let's, we have to talk a little bit about mRNA. Um, first of all, these vaccines, because before you're talking about getting the dead virus or attenuated virus or some proteins off the virus, that's hard to get in mass, right? And to rapidly make. Here, time was of the essence. We had to make a vaccine quick. So we started making these mRNA uh, vaccines. So without going into too much detail, do you know how DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, that's that double helix. Yep. Uh, con contains all your genetic information, makes you look like the way you look, makes me look like the way sure. I look, makes you guys look the way you look. DNA, Canadian discovery, by the way. And there you go. Watson. Watson and Crick. Watson and Crick. Elementary, my dear Watson. It's DNA. So then DNA lives in the nucleus of the cell. Yep. mRNA is just one of those strands. It comes, takes a photocopy of the DNA, leaves the nucleus, goes into the rest of the cell and gets into the ribosomes, which are the factory where they make proteins, okay? And thus ends the Genetics 101 lecture. Done, okay. So now we have an mRNA vaccine. So all it is is a little strand of mRNA. Okay. Goes into your cell. Doesn't go in the nucleus, doesn't mess with your DNA. Okay, good. Well, once it's used up, it's chewed up and spit out, so it's not staying in there forever. Okay. Very safe in that way. But we can make it quickly, right? We can make these quickly. A lot of hurdles had to be overcome. One, you had to make sure when you introduce the mRNA, why doesn't it cause an immune response? Two, you gotta convince the cells to take up the mRNA. Yeah. Three, you gotta make sure that they're gonna use that mRNA to make proteins. And four, you gotta make sure that you encapsulate the mRNA when you inject it so that the body's blood, chemicals in the blood don't attack it and break it up and make it not work. So all these hurdles. A lot of moving parts. And it's been, they've been working on it for like 30 years. It didn't just happen like that. Sure. And hundreds of companies have been working on it for one year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And don't discount them. Like, this is revolutionary because we'll be able to take this, this technology from this you know, terrible event in the world, the COVID-19 virus, but this technology of mRNA vaccines, we're going to be able to take that and use it for other applications. Okay? Yes. So good news. So that's all it is, a little strand of mRNA that's getting injected into you so it goes in your cells and convinces your cells to make this certain protein that matches the protein on the virus so that your body can make antibodies to that protein and kill the virus if you're exposed to it. Okay. It's that easy. It sounds so easy when you say it like that. Did you get yours? I did. I did get mine, I think, uh, maybe six weeks ago. Nice. Did you? I, I got mine as well. That's why we can be here That's like this, CEO without masks. Face, That's right, right. With, without masks. That's so it. actually recently the CDC said, hey, CDC if you're said. hanging out with a bunch of vaccinated people, you actually don't have to physical distance and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to wear a mask. There you go, right? So if you haven't been vaccinated, just put a mask over us on your screen. And uh, how did you do with your uh, vaccine? So full disclosure, the first one, no problem. Walked in, got it, no yeah, issues. My arm was a little sore. Yeah. Second one, got to be honest, I was, I was pretty good the day of, and then the next day, down and out, like I was hit by a truck, like fetal position, shaking, like crushed. Right. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I felt like I only got nine hours sleep the next day. I was a little... A little, a little sore. And everybody exper experiences it differently, right? Yeah, That's, yeah. It's very variable. Were you, uh, do you have any, like, were you feeling foggy at all? Yeah, a little confused, a little lacking some focus, man cold, needed a lot of attention from my family that intermittently came. 
Me too, me too. I watched a silly little cat video and normally I would have giggled for like 15 seconds. I think I giggled for like a minute. So I was <laughs> like just... But we're, here we are, vaccinated. There, people react differently. Yes. Dr. Weening didn't feel really good after the second dose. I yeah. didn't feel really bad at all after the second dose. And but one I, day and then I was fine. Everybody reacts differently so you can expect a little bit. Yes. So, um, and our hospital did an awesome job. Oh Amazing job. They set up a vaccine center, like a regional vaccine center, really yeah. quick, staffed it really quick, got the shots in our arms really quick. And then I was scared I wasn't going to get the second shot. Yes, and we were delayed a little bit. A little bit, but not much. The hospital really came through, so tip my hat to our hospital for that. Because, yeah, in Canada, we don't have a manufacturing facility, so we had to rely on buying or placing orders with other vaccine companies. And we placed... I think in the order of 400 million orders, so more than 10 for every person in our country, yeah. maybe more per capita than anyone in the world. Yeah, it, it turns out that wasn't such a good strategy after all. How come? Well, we placed a bunch of orders uh, that we we're supposed to get at the end of January, February, but the manufacturers didn't deliver on those orders. And that's really the key with an order is that anyone can take an order, but the, really the key is delivering the order. Exactly, exactly. And so in any case, we, we are joking around a little bit. It's been difficult for the whole world. Everyone's has. clamoring for the yeah. same vaccine or yeah. multiple different companies' vaccines. Yeah. Um, they're doing as, as good of a job as they can and actually hundreds of millions of doses yeah. are getting out there. Yeah. Um, so what, what's your message, Paul, about the vaccine and all about the different vaccines? You know, some people are worried that they're getting, not getting the right one or maybe they should wait. What, what are your thoughts? My, I mean, like I said, I was anti-vax, now yes. I'm uncle vax. I would say go for it. You know what I mean? If, yeah. As soon as it becomes available to you, you should really consider going for it. Millions of people have had it, yep. so it's safe. Yes. So far, it seems very safe. Yes. And you will protect yourself yeah. and do your part in stopping this virus from continuing to exist. And I think they've already shown that it's drastically reduced hospitalization, severe disease, and death, which really was the main thing we're going after. We're not trying to get case counts to zero. Yeah. We're trying to protect the most vulnerable. And this has really been, all of them have been shown, regardless of the different numbers and efficacies and all that stuff, that they've all been good at that. So get one as soon as you can get one, I think, because people are like, oh, should I wait for this one or that one? I think you get what's available. And if it means you have to wait for your second dose, I think one dose is better than no doses. Yeah. So. Um, all the countries are doing their best, and eventually we're going to all get through hey, this. Hey, what about the variants? Is it going to work against the variants? So some of them do, some of them don't. And, and again, you can't really, you can't say, oh, I'm going to wait for a vaccine against the variants because yeah. you don't know if there's, when it's going to happen. And, yeah. and there could be another variant next week or next month. So I Everything, think you just deal with what's in front of you. Everything I read says it's probably going to work against the variants. Yes. And a variant, eventually the variant is going to be the new norm. Like, that's nature, right? The virus right. mutates, it takes over the original virus. So Make B117 your new normal. That's your new normal, <laughs> right? And so it is probably gonna work with that. So it's time to gather your friend and go for some shots. Yep. Right? Excellent. To quote Pat Benatar. Turn around bright eyes? No. Hit me with your best shot. Oh, hit me with your best shot. I like it. Right. Hit me with your best shot. So that's the deal. We, we're living proof here. You can get the vaccine and be okay. And if we, if we all just kind of stick together, we're going to get through this. So, hey, if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.